Howdy, Beef Lombard here, and welcome. Alright, yes, I'm not very enthusiastic today, but I'm trying. Alright, so yes, as the tittle has explained, was screwing around with the top down, and getting it back up just a minute. From time to time, you need to learn how to do certain things. And you start writing against the wall, and like, well, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how to do, do that, and, well, for starters, when you're creating a new project, and ignoring the map that's in front of us for right now, you've got first person, flying, puzzle, rolling, third person, top down, twin stick shooter, handheld AR, which I really want to start playing around with, uh, side scroller, 2D side scroller, vehicle, virtual reality, like to mess with, but far too fat and lazy to be getting up and moving around and all that crap. And vehicle advance. So, what can we learn from these different templates? Well, you know, I'm forever using a, um, you know, third person template. And it's all I do. And that's all I really care about. Because, you know, if you're running a first person, then you're just a walking set of frickin' arms. And doing multiplayer gets far too complex for trying to do multiplayer with first person because you're just a set of floating arms. And then whenever you draw the actual character, whenever I'm looking at another player, you don't want that to just be another set of floating arms. So you have to actually have third person and first person combined together. So why not just do third person and have a second camera for first person view? Uh, that's my opinion on it, and I'm sticking to it. Rolling. Well, okay. You know, what can you learn from that? Well, basic collision stuff, and there's some other things you might be able to learn from, from her and there. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for the sub there. Puzzle. I still haven't figured that crap out yet. Um, and all these have their uses, but top-down, I've never taken the time to mess around with top-down. And I've had people ask me, well, why don't you make a, you know, a top-down tutorial or, or do a multiplayer in top-down? I'm like, uh, okay. So, I started screwing around with just a, an example map. And what I've done is I've, I've mixed in here the um, Cine Studios. Let's actually take my bots and put them in the right folder. And this is actually the um, top-down example map, and I've just deleted a bunch of stuff here. Um, so, make sure you go into it and play in the demo map just to kind of show. Alright, so I'm used to the, the keyboard for, for moving around. And this is just, okay, you've got the little green circle cross here, which is cool. You left click and your character walks to that location. I'm like, okay, I didn't, you know, didn't think about doing that. Okay, that works. But then again, you think of classic games like Diablo. Um, that's how you move around the map, and you can hold down the mouse cursor and just move your mouse around, and it follows that. But whenever you encounter a bad guy, what I've done is taken a few steps farther and made it to where now you can see the crosshair goes from green to red because I'm on a, uh, an actual character or a living being, so to speak, and I can actually press the number one key and he will launch a spear. It was the first simple weapon to uh, deploy, which is just spawning an actor, which is a projectile. But I'll look at that no. in just a minute. No. No. Added a hit effect and a kill effect. You know, death animation. He falls over. Found that like this right here, your cursor tends to land up here, and it's like, oh, you're trying to move and you can't, so you have to move past that. And then, you know, like I said, with the um, the ability for your character, as I'm looking this way. Okay, let's get a better example here. I'm looking away. Now when I hold the mouse over the target, it automatically snaps to face your target because it is a target. So now I can throw my spears. No. I can't throw them because I'm not at a target. So now if I aim and put my crosshair over this guy, I'm using the Mexican Bandito because her hats conveniently look like a bullseye target. So, um, no. 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 so that's that. And like I said, you can get... Um, a crosshair change to know that what you're aiming at is actually a target. And you see the targets despawn. I'll show what I've done to change these around a little bit. No! 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 
Oh. But I gotta kill the bad guys, you know. No. 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 So that's that. And, okay, it doesn't look like much. It just, you know, looks re relatively simple. But the... And I, I've already gotten rid of a number of the things that were in here. Um, Blueprints-wise and maps, I've already gotten rid of them out of here. It still is not letting me delete the folder, of course. You know, because I'm Real Engine 4. But with the Top Town character, what I've done is I've noticed that a lot of the stuff for the targeting stuff is actually... Or the click to move is actually done in the actual um, player controller and not in the player character. So I'll go ahead and get that one opened up and I'll switch between the two here. All I did to get the, the cursor to change was you had the original cursor which is green. All I did was I opened that up and just scrolling through there's this node here you click on that and you can I made a duplicate of the original because well there's more than just showing a material here because it's glowing, it's see-through and that kind of stuff. So all I did was I clicked on here and clicked on here and I picked a new color and for the the new version that I created and to start off with you had Event Begin Play Activate Camera 1 and that's that's from the original. Unfortunately everything is running off of the event tick. Now I've already made some considerable changes here the original part for movement was casting to the, the player controller and this I didn't really even know this existed because I haven't really even though I've set up shooting based off of the line trace I've never explored all the other options that are available tonight's drink of choice water yeah I drink water every now and then I've also got coffee but uh, you know I drink water So, get hit results under cursor by channel. I did, didn't even know that existed. But the trouble with it is, is it's running, everything is running off of event tick. So, if you're running multiplayer and you've got a lot of stuff going on in your map, then it's going to start potatoing, you know, computer after a while because so much is running off of the event tick. It's running so many things. It's not a huge disaster or anything, but, and this is the way that it was done in the template. I'm just expanding upon that and what I may end up doing is setting up an event like for shooting. It only shoots the spear and you can change that to a gun or whatever else later on but uh, you could always actually make that only work when you're, you're pressing a key and that's what I did was I, I bound the number one key to shoot a spear and it could be a bow or a gun or what have you. But you would think that you want to hold down the shift key and then click to move or something because after a while that's going to get a little taxing on the system but all that's doing is setting your your world location rotation but it's not actually moving you it's getting a reference to the cursor and setting the location there so that's not actually doing the movement so I was like well how do you actually set up the movement and we'll come back to this this is the uh, this stuff for changing the the actual target. So inside the top-down controller, which is my own version of, because I've made changes to it to start doing multiplayer with it. Um, off the event tick, you've got a gate, which you know is going from your input, press to release on set destination. So when you left click, it's actually doing that on open and on close. And still kind of new to working with gates as well, but. It initially went from here directly into this stuff and again I broke it apart so that I could set up some replication for multiplayer but it gets the controlled pawn gets the actual location subtracts the location and does some basic now this is all stuff that's in the example so if you do a top-down that's that's the thing so essentially where you're actually now clicking on the map is where you know your crosshair is and where that is when you left click it uses all this information to do a simple move to locator well back when I was screwing around with the, the I agree you know and this is stuff that I didn't know how to do some of it I kind of knew but I never really explored into so it's not that you know it's just a uh, okay it's, it's top down nobody really cares about top down but some people do, but it's not necessarily about this being a top-down project. 
It's the lessons you can learn by exploring these other projects. I'd forgotten about the simple move to location. Now, a while back with the uh, the Paragon project that I abandoned because I couldn't get anybody that was smart enough to figure out how to do um, one simple thing. And I gave people a task of, and me not even being a Paragon player, I, I took the time to research the different attacks for the characters that I was working on. And with Shinbi, one of her things was being able to, I don't even remember the name of it, where you can click on the map and she would, instead of teleport to it, she would kind of float across the map and get to that location. Well, nobody could come up with the correct method to replicate that. Everybody's idea to do that was just a damn teleport. So, how is her move any different than a top-down saying, okay, I just now saw a target. My crosshair turned to that ability. Okay, so, well, that's one thing. No. But, no. No. I'm sorry, I've only got the one death uh, sound in here. Yeah, this was an exploratory thing. But, you know, whenever you're, you were doing that, they would just perform the move and the character would just teleport from here to here in the same direction they were looking um, and not the actual spot that they you hit the ability it should then give you a cursor with something very similar to this right here that will project forward and then whenever you do it instead of doing a walking animation it would do a different animation and now the closest thing to her animation for doing that slide that she does that follows the contour of the ground is the uh, jump loop animation which is a default animation from the um, the regular third person example but I wanted to be able to have my character not only as I'm moving around you can see I'm facing this way straight down as soon as I, my green cursor hits the target, it turns red and my character snaps to that location, or that rotation. No. 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 And I can then fire because my crosshair is now red instead of green. No. No. The no. one problem that I run into with doing this in any kind of replication, no. 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 the first thing that I've noticed with any, any template is r replication no. doesn't no. like rotation and I thought that I would come in here and maybe I could learn something else about replicating no. No. and seeing if it was just me or I was doing something wrong no. No. but no. 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 sorry <laughs> addictive just sit here and just click around the map and do things but as you can see the, the character the targets will delete themselves after a certain time but just doing that simple thing of doing her movement which was just the same as if I did this and then the character didn't even do a uh, a walk animation the character just goes into a jump loop which is hovering above the ground and then goes to the location that was under the crosshair when you actually performed the action so if somebody had taken the time to actually come in here and play around with it the top down then they would have learned how to do all that what I've done for replication here is just I set up um, the actual effects and I found that the only way that it's, it worked correctly is whenever I got the uh, hit result under cursor by channel and plug that into um, the custom event there which is server move to location switch as authority and then client move to location and then I ran a pass through between them for the reference for the hit location. So then essentially this is still right here is now passing through everything else to get to here and breaking the hit result and then using the location and so forth and then plugging in simple move to location. So this is a valuable thing that I, I failed to remember that existed and hell I'm going to use this and other stuff. If you want to create that same dash, that's the, the name of the ability, uh, Shinbi had the ability to use dash. And that one thing right there, simple move to location, doesn't involve AI, 
But there's one thing you do have to remember that um, I don't care how cool your map is, if you don't have a nav mesh bounds, this works in the same basic principle on a top down. When you create a map in a top down example like this, you have to have a nav mesh bounds for your map. Because if you just go in here and, for example, let's look at the maps that I've got created is the main menu map, the lobby map. So, example, if I go to my lobby map. Okay, this is just a normal map and there is none. So if I hit this and go in here, make sure I'm not in third person and use top down game mode and I hit play, I'm like, oh yeah, and crap, I'm clicking all over the damn place. So at first time I was messing around with the, the first map, I'm like, I feel like a complete and utter idiot. My character's just not moving anywhere. What the hell am I doing wrong? And I'm like So I went back to the the top down example map, I'm like Oh, really? It's as simple as that. You have to have a nav mesh bounds. So I grab a nav mesh bounds and let's zero that puppy dog out. And I always forget that since this is not a map that I made, I put everything to where when you put something down, it snaps to the zero. So you put a nav mesh in here and stretch it out for the boundary of the entire map. Oh, I hate whenever someone creates a map and they don't start with a freaking zero 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 axis. So now that I've got a nav mesh in my map, as soon as I hit play, hey look I can walk around now. There's no targets in here so I have nothing to aim at. But then I, was, I, I started thinking about, well, you know, the crosshair changing colors, that wasn't part of the original uh, top-down example. I'm like, well, whenever I mouse over a target, I want the damn thing to actually, and I'm going to grab a bot, and I'm going to throw it in here. I want my cursor to change colors. As I'm moving around the map, hey, there's a bad guy. Well, I want to shoot at him, so I need my character to face that direction. And I want my cursor to change colors. It's pretty simple, right? There's still some slight bugs with the way I've got everything tweaked, but I like the fact that my cursor changes color whenever I'm actually over a target. So that's something that can come in handy as well, as a lesson learned. But facing the target, so I'm, I'm, if I come over here and now I'm facing the opposite direction, I want my character to snap to the right location so I can oh, fire and no, no! hit my target. So to change the color in the um, the player character, I already had the set location under the cursor, which was the original stuff they had set up in here for doing that. And what I actually did was I, I made sure that it was created as set location under cursor. That's actually as a separate function. So you can actually call it, and I, I ran it off a of sequence node so that I could do the, the color change thing. And since there was a get hit result under cursor by channel that I had never explored the option of before, I'm like, I'm going to play with it. So I just copied that in here and get player controller, get hit result under cursor by channel, break hit results. And I wanted it to know that I'm on a, a character. So cast to character, which that could be a player or that could be just a bot that's running around or standing idle. Anything that's classified as a character now, when you place your crosshair or your cursor over the top of it, it's now going to change colors because I got reference to cursor to the world. Cursor to the world, you can see, starts out as the cursor being at the base of your feet. And that's actually right here. It's an actual decal component that's applied to the character. So what I did was I set decal material so whenever I cast to and I'm actually seeing a character under my crosshair, I'm changing my cursor, um, my decal material from green to red. But if what's underneath my cursor, I didn't want it to change colors. I want it to stay green. So cast failed goes directly into going back green again. And I just set up a variable of can attack yes or no so when you're moused over a character it is now a target so you can't attack but anything else whenever that cursor is green 
can attack is no. So I, I added an arrow component right here in front of my character because this is where I'm going to spawn my spears from. And okay, cool enough. So I wanted this in front of the capsule. I didn't want it to, to collide with anything. Come from about midpoint. I, this, this seemed like the logical place to spawn a spear. So I actually grabbed that same thing right here and I wanted to set my world rotation so that I could fire it in that location in, in that direction so I, I got my world location I got a find look at rotation which grabs from the location of the target in the break hit result I drug that all the way in here as my target and I'd never used this one before and I wanted to use it I, I want to learn how to do stuff like this so I got my world location from the arrow itself and a find look at rotation so my world location is the start the target is the actual target from the the mouse um, event I set my world rotation based off of the arrow I want the arrow to be since it's locked to my mesh and everything else to, to turn me and I'm setting my actor rotation which is me the, the actor to match the rotation from this value not even sure if this this right here is even necessary because I've got this so I, I probably could delete that but it's working so I'm not going to screw with it just yet um, <laughs> you know one of those things if it's not broke keep fixing it till it is again there's a lot of stuff in here that referred to um, using VR and I'm not using VR in this project and it was a learning experience just trying to figure out how to get rid of it so the firing of the spear itself essentially I just key press one I ask can we attack and that's based off of whether or not my mouse cursor is on top of a target or not and that's cool so if I can't attack then I'm just gonna spawn an actor which is in this case the spear and where does it spawn from to get my transformer where it's coming from I grab the reference to my arrow that I placed on my character which is this guy the red arrow not the little blue one but the red one and I got world transform plug that into the transform and there you go and that's how you can shoot and that's really really simple but I learned quite a bit from just screwing with this little top-down project where you click on the map and your character moves to that location you have a cursor that's actually glowing and that that refreshes with the event tick for the actual location I'm not a fan of that um, but also I wanted my character to snap to the location of a target so if I know that this little bandito here and said I use him because I, I like that his hat looks like a bullseye so as soon as I'm my green cursor mouses over a target or a character that's a killable character he snaps faces the the location now you notice as I'm moving up and down I probably need to go back and refine that and that'll fix one of my other little bugs see how it's changing his rotation of his feet his whole character is kind of bobbling back and forth so that's kind of a eh, thing that needs to be fixed shouldn't be difficult but but as you can see he, he then he's facing the target and the cursor is red so it means I can shoot and then there I'm spawning no. a projectile no. No. so it was so simple and you know the way everything works but it's just a matter of of learning things like get hit result under cursor um, and the cursor is actually from the line trace it's actually doing an actual line trace uh, let's look at the set location under cursor again it's using the same thing get hit result under cursor but inside the actual uh, player controller itself so there's all kind of stuff hidden and tucked away inside here where it's doing the same basic thing it's detecting where the cursor is but again 
you know, it's pulling off of Event Tech. And these are ones that I created. Uh, there's nothing in the, the construction script on these. It's all in the event graph. So, on event tick, this was this was all from the original one. And said it had a bunch of other stuff in here that was for um, using VR. And I had to, to carefully strip things away so that I could kind of figure that out and see what needed to stay, what needed to get be gotten rid of, and. I'll still need to go back in there and experiment a little bit, and I'm gonna. I know you won't be able to see both views, but as the server, I can see my crosshair for moving around. That's no problem. A mouse over, and it doesn't is not affected by the other player, so I can't attack the other player. So I can see my own cursor. I can move around. Everything is good to go. And if I want to, I can aim at the target and, and attack him. But if we go to the client itself, we can see our our, our cursor, and it's not we can't hit the server, so we're not playing to shoot other players here. Um, and you can see it changes to the. Um, you can see the the animation is really jerky and it doesn't face correctly. So I'm not a fan of this for the. Um, the actual event tick controlling as you're mousing around like this, it is so raggy and jerky that I'd have to spend a bunch of time to, to go over all this stuff. But I mouse over my target and I can shoot. I haven't got that far on the actual replicating the damage and that kind of stuff. So the only thing I was worried about replicating was the movement. And after I saw that, it's like, eee really really jerky and I don't know if that's just because it's running off of uh, the event tick and it's trying to every time it wants to change a um, minute amount of movement it's having to say ask the server can I do this yes okay do it uh, okay now can I do this yeah so it just doesn't seem logical to to do that and yes right now I didn't set up a rate of fire so you can just spam the crap out of it but I didn't want the the server to be able to attack the player. So, but if you notice, I still got more to to do on replication. Um, I'm gonna face the client away from the target, and let's face the server away. So right now, until I finish doing all the replication stuff on it and fine tuning the movement, uh, watch as I, I mouse over the target. Both of them actually now snap to face the target so that would get annoying too um, oh. Oh. Ah. the server shooting is as far as I got but any questiones I just I thought it was useful to um, oh. Oh. Ah. to see these other things that were done in here on how they got this to work because and I was hoping this would be the Diablo style movement where you move your mouse cursor around and like, okay, I'm going to click here and my character is going to move there. So, and these can be useful in, in any other kind of game modes, but um, holding down the mouse cursor and, and I think that's what's actually dragging things down a little bit because as you hold down that, that mouse cursor to actually control your, your character's movement, like this, where you're actually running around and holding down the mouse button for controlling, I think that's where you're actually because you're doing event tick, and you're you're pulling off that that tick every single solitary time, and I think that's what's causing the problem with the movement. So if you just set it to where you left click and you move to that location, left click you move to that location is your only movement, and not holding down on it on the press and then release that kind of stuff just toggle it to where left clicking will move you to the location from there or think about it like this if you wanted to use this for I'm gonna throw a hand grenade and you're projecting a crosshair out that goes out onto the ground and wherever you click I always prefer blueprints because I can rapidly throw a project together. And honestly, 
95% or better of the things that you would want to do in a game can be done with blueprints. Probably more. Cl probably closer to 98%. There are a few things that you really need to do in, in C Sharp or C++ uh, to be able to get it to function 100% correctly. But basic functionality for an entire game can be done 100% out of uh, blueprints. I mean, I'm running this off of a um, simple multiplayer template that I made for my projects quite a while ago. No. No. Over a year ah. ago. And it's this is multiplayer, so technically speaking, I could pack this up and ten of us could jump in here and be running around doing this. And that's because of my little simple multiplayer Steam template is just using this is actually using Advanced Sessions plugin so I can get more information. Like I can get the Steam username and Steam avatar and I can get your unique Steam ID and help save that as part of the save game system. And you know, it's a lot of useful things that I can do by using Steam's Advanced Sessions. And say if I go to the main menu map and let's say I wanted to play this, I'll do it in a standalone game. So this is what it would look like when it first comes up, and you can select to go into single player. Yay! And there we go, we're in single player. Um, it just absolutely quit working. So, yeah. That I haven't looked at yet, but honestly, you could actually um, do the same thing with multiplayer. And I'm probably not going to keep this project, just because... It was just a learning experience. And you can find a game and search. But you can see you get access Steam community while playing, and my username and, and avatar for Steam, and that kind of stuff. Or I can just host a game, and I can give it whatever name I want and make, and there we go. And I can just go play my game. No, no, no! But I noticed that um, I can't hit the escape key. So some key functionality isn't working correctly. So I'm not sure which what I'll have to do with, on that on the game mode. It's probably just to make sure that it's set to um, UI and game, so all keys and mouse and everything else all work at the same time. But yeah, so I wanted to have multiplayer functionality, and I did all that with blueprints. I did the um, everything else is all in, in blueprints. But it was nice that I could come up with learning new stuff by just taking a break from my main project and just screwing with something that I hadn't done before. And I wouldn't have known about this node right here of get re, hit result under the cursor. What can you use that for in a third person shooter or a first person shooter? What about when you're in scope mode and you're aiming and you decide that um, your, your crosshairs are now on a target? The a little marker indicator on your scope could change color saying that this is now a target or your your crosshairs can go from black to red or white to red or green to red or whatever just by you mousing over the top of something that's a potential target or you're scanning you're using a scan feature and your character's looking around trying to scan for something and then all of a sudden as you're scanning around pink this is a target so now I can actually um aim at that target. So let's actually go back to that map and go back into selected viewport. So again, so as, as you're looking, imagine you're looking through your scope and suddenly this is a viable target or this is a um, um, uh, a resource node or this is a or whatever. I mean you want your, your mouse to actually change colors or your cursor to change colors or what have you this could be done the same way is you could make your character turn into a different character or, or change clothes just because you moused over something or there's so many different uses you can do by having this um, one node and I'm gonna resist the urge to actually kill him eh. so get hit result under cursor by channel was something that I learned from this 
and I used it in my first time ever using it for something was doing the same thing of get hit result under cursor by channel and letting it cast to the character or a character in general just cast to character means if it's a character it's a drivable car or it's a a person that you can actually take control of or an AI that can be controlled a controllable asset within the game is considered to be a character so if you want it to work when you're mousing over anything that's a character then you can just use cast to character if you want specific like um, cast to third person if you only want it to work if it's on a third person animation or, or character which I don't have that in here right now but um, like mine would be cast to player underscore base if I only want this to change colors whenever I'm mousing over another player which is going to have the same blueprint that I'm running I could have run this cast to player base and then as my hit result I can do whatever you know from here I get whatever references I need um, but actually doing the I never in my first five or six times of trying to figure out how I'm going to get this thing to I'm running branch nodes. I want to change the damn color of my cursor. I spent probably about an hour, hour and a half, just kind of screwing around. Like, okay, well, how am I going to do it? And I, but I want to cast to the character. I don't want. I know that I want to cast to the character, and I completely ignored cast failed. And I'm like, well, what the hell does cast failed do? So I plugged in that to the original green cursor, and this is the red cursor decal. I'm like, oh, son of a bitch, it was that easy? And it was right there in front of my face the whole time. When in doubt, screw around. You'll figure it out. Just don't be afraid to mess with something. You know, I made a project just to test out things like changing my, my cursor color. And that was it. It was just cast your character. So whenever I'm moused over my character or I'm aiming at, my char at a target that is a shootable target... I want to change the crosshair color. It's all I wanted to do was figure that out. And then when I got in here, I learned how it's actually getting that information. And I learned a lot of little things just screwing around with a top-down project that I, I didn't know before. And I'm constantly screwing around with different ways of spawning projectiles and so forth. And I don't spawn projectiles very often um, and the reason why is when you're doing a regular shooter you're just shooting and unless you're trying to go for a little bit of realism where when you shoot a projectile out it actually has a arced path it has gravity it's going to fire and in the case of Unreal Engine you think you're shooting in a straight line if you have no gravity but if this is my my trace art right here is where I shoot my projectile from a real bullet's gonna go up and then down you're not gonna have that with Unreal Engine 4 you're going to spawn it and it's going to naturally sag down over time because it's losing gravity so you just kinda have to get used to that but that's all it is for spawning that projectile and again I made an arrow component here in on the character so that I could actually have and it's attached to the mesh so that it's actually I just selected mesh add component arrow right there and added that component in here so that I would have a way of, and rotation and everything that I needed for responding the projectile just so happened that it worked out as well for um, helping to get the direction that I'm facing and that kind of stuff for setting my actor's rotation to face the target. And again, I don't really think I need that at all. In fact, um, I could probably go ahead and just break this. Break this. Break this. I'm not going to 
Well, I mean, I can. I can go ahead and delete that. And just go straight across to here. I don't think I need to worry about the arrow component changing its rotation. That should be all I needed for whenever I mouse over a target. Boom. There we go. It faces the target. And now I can shoot. No. And no. I spawn my projectiles in the correct direction. The projectile itself is just a gadget, gadgets, gadgets, weapons, projectiles, spear. All I did was that from the default scene route, I had the spear. I made sure that I turned it to the right so it's facing that way. And so there's my spear. I added a sphere collision to the end of it. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm actually going to move that back to here. And why would I do that is because I want it to look like it's sticking into the enemy before they just die and go away. But I added that capsule or sphere collision in here so that this could actually be the thing that starts the damage. And then we have the projectile movement, which all you do is add component projectile, and it's right there. So you add your projectile movement. And then in the event graph, all I did was right click on the sphere collision and add event on component begin overlap, which is this node here. Cast to character because I wanted to work on any character. I wanted to shoot at a character. I don't want to shoot at a wall or anything. And then apply damage. And then I set how much damage I want to put into it. And the, on cast failed we have set lifespan and I added that to be three seconds so if you're shooting and the spear goes out you totally miss your target three seconds later that spear is gonna go away so that's how I'm, I'm getting rid of the extra actor of the extra spears that I'm throwing but once I apply the damage here it just goes right here to destroy actor and it destroys the actual spear itself after it hits the target and applies the damage. So one way or another, between set lifespan and destroy actor, the spears go away after they do what they gotta do. Very simple to set up. Um, the controller, like I said, this is where you're doing your your move to location primary, and that node right there is the one that I forgot all about and I'm going to be experimenting with for other things. Like say if you're doing a Paragon style project and you want to replicate the uh, the dash attack, this is the node you need to know. because And that also means you need to put a nav mesh bounds in all your maps to cover everything. But if you're going to have bots running around anyway, you're going to want that. So that's something you're probably going to have anyway. So a simple move to location um, with self in the controller. This is all based off of the player controller. And whatever you left click essentially well you left click and then you let go of it is setting your, your direction and stuff like that. But all said and done, whenever you're actually making your moves, it's based off of simple move to location. So yeah, this is if you're trying to figure out how to do the dash from Paragon, this is how it's done, is with that. And it makes me almost want to, to re-download the, um, the Shinbi character and just do that. But I could probably set up a blank project with third-person character and using this right here and the same setup in here that you're using from this. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to actually create it in this project, since I'm not going to keep this project anyway, and actually use the third person example, because I mean, I can go back in here and change this over to um, uh, in the world settings. I can change this back over to um, a third person game mode. So when I hit play, now I'm in a regular character, and I can walk around, can't shoot, can't those spears can't do anything because I'm in a different uh, blueprint. I do love this asset pack, by the way. This is the Western Frontier asset pack. And holy crap, the demonstration map is awesome too. 
Um, so yeah, I would have to redo everything and set up probably in a first person mode. I, I don't remember, is Paragon actually a top down game? Or are you playing basically in a third person uh, view and then you have your, your attacks, you do I don't I didn't play the game, so um say so if you're now aiming at something, having a fixed crosshair in the world, and then say if uh, the number one key is dash or whatever the the key was for it when you press it now you have a moving crosshair your character is not moving you're not looking at your character you're looking at the crosshair you pick a location with your crosshair and then let go and it now moves your character to that location but as I was telling people how that should work you have to look. Well, if I'm aiming on the other side of this wall here, I need to establish, if I'm going to do this ability, is there anything in my path? And you probably want your line trace to be at the midsection of your character so that you know if the terrain's usable at that point. Because if you're trying to do your dash ability and you're going, say, to where that um, bandito is right there, and there's a wall in the way, you're going to stop here. You want it to stop there. So you have to have some smart control over your, your cast abilities. So it'll just do it to right here and stop. Okay, then crap, i got to go around. And now I can do it and I can slide to that location because there's nothing in my, my path. Yeah, the more I kind of screw with this, um, this asset pack here, um, I did a review on it and I did a try before you buy on this one. It's actually on my itch.io account. Um, yeah. I don't want to save this map because I, I changed the, the third person game mode. So don't save. I'm going to be doing more with this asset pack. I'm going to hit play on this one. And exit game, you schmuckerini. Uh, let's set this to... Um, third person game mode so I can actually walk around now these buildings you can actually open up the doors on these and go inside um, that one as well this one that one over there this one door is kind of open already so if nobody else has any questiones I'm actually gonna probably switch it up a little bit here take a little break and go away from that top-down project and I don't know, just mm, I need to focus on my main project but and this isn't you know this asset pack doesn't really fit into the main project but damn it if I don't like it <laughs> I mean there's so many cool things and the, one of the other things I want to learn about and I, I know it's possible to do but like these mine cart tracks, like you want to see Minecraft, you know. But um, with these, you've got the uh, the track sections here. And of course, you've also got some that are to go down, so you got the curve there. Um, I would imagine you would use a spline mesh component, and you might be able to use these sections of the mine track and mine cart track, and actually make a spline mesh actor that you could actually lay down and then set up the mine carts to actually follow that holy crap I didn't walk in here before um yeah when I see crates of explosives and TNT barrels you know good and damn well I want to make those blow up danger keep out but yeah that would be kind of cool to actually experiment with the um, the minecart track and a spline actor component for laying down the tracks but you could also set an AI that actually follows that now, I know there was an asset um, system you can get from the marketplace that deals with um, trains and I think that will be cool to experiment with but along the same principle of using the the minecart system would love to set up a 
minecart ride where you can actually get on there and it'd be like a, on a roller coaster. Um, I know it's possible to do because one game in particular that runs off of Unreal Engine 4 is Tower Unite. They have a roller coaster system where you can actually ride the roller coaster. It only took them a couple of years to actually get it functional, but you know, if they can do it, and they're using 420, so yeah, if they can do it with 420, then you can as well. I'm not saying that I can. I'm not saying that I'm necessarily that smart, but you know, if I, I screwed around with it enough, it's a good um, possibility that I could. Totally digging this. I know that this is kind of a static thing here, but I like to see the flags um, have a fabric movement to them. I'm assuming you probably could do that. I've never done it before, but make that into a fabric component to where it has a wind effect and it actually moved and rippled. And ladder effects, um, yes, you can do. Essentially, yeah, you're just setting your movement mode to up and down only instead of left and right. So yeah, this is this is just what I learned from screwing around with the um, top-down asset pack or asset system or top-down example that is part of Unreal Engine 4. That also makes me think of, okay, well why don't I do something for while I'm in a canoe and use a canoe to actually as a top-down component or what have you. Just set a camera when you're in it and actually take the player and socket the player then or socket the canoe to the player either way so whenever you're in a canoe you can actually have control of it and float down a river or with that same situation using the um, the look at system now simple move to is nice as well um, but the same thing that I did here was getting the um, the, not necessarily the, the hit result under the cursor, but with your line tray system, when you're actually aiming at something and you get your hit result, like you left click to to set a vector or whatever, and it's actually using find look at rotation, and it's using um, a piece of your actual, in this case, an arrow component on my character to get its location. So now I can compare the two together and set my rotation to actually be that. And if you can do set actual rotation, then what if you had a turret on a tank? Same basic thing. You now aim and then you click and then your turret or your tank spins around to aim at your target. So then you could create a, a basic tank system where you're doing left, you know, your WASD controls are actually moving your tank itself and you're using the same system of a top-down controller to actually separately control your turret. So as you're moving your mouse around, your mouse controls your turret. So if I move my mouse to the right, my turret moves to the right. If I look up, it looks up. If I look down, it looks down. If um, you know, you're ready to fire, then you could have your crosshair change colors because now you're actually on a, um, a target. So, see, there's another way that the top-down can actually influence another style game or game type. So now, again, imagine you're actually in a tank. Your WASD controls are going to actually move your tank around. And for this situation, my mouse is actually the crosshairs of my tank. So whenever I'm actually aiming, you see it projects it flat against the wall or flat on the ground and it changes when I get to the wall it starts to creep up the side of it and then you can do that so as you're moving your your mouse cursor around whether you're in an artillery mode or direct fire mode what have you as you're moving it around it can actually be the same thing as what I'm doing here your mouse actually will then control your turret and then you're now aiming on the target you snap to and Why am I not shooting? Did I disconnect something here? Did I break something? 
Probably so. I love when I break things. I broke it. By probably doing that, whatever, I deleted the other one. But this is setting the actor rotation. That should be the same thing. I love when I break things. Yeah, that's probably what happened is, is um, so you can see my cursor changed here. But I'm not able to fire anymore. It was the same as I, I had the problem earlier with the mouse. I mean, the, uh, the, the keys, not being able to hit the escape key. So that's that. The only thing that I remember changing was taking out that one reference of setting the rotation of the arrow and I don't need to set the rotation of the arrow anymore because my character is actually facing that direction and I broke something and don't even know what I broke um, top down controller top down character yeah I didn't do anything that would affect that. <coughs> Alright, well, I'll fix my problem here in a later. So I'm not worried about with this project right here. The whole point was um, getting all this information and looking at how I can apply this. So what I recommend you do is if you've got another project that you've, you've started and you want to experiment what you can do with this stuff let me actually create a new project short term so you can see what I was talking about before my project and we'll do it as top down I mean I'm gonna immediately destroy this one whenever I get done with it create project um, don't even care about the name because like I said I'm gonna delete this so when the project actually comes up what you're actually you got it works out of the box okay but you've got all this stuff for VR and if you're not going to use it then okay discover my assets all right thank you so you hit play everything works just fine and this is your top-down template and what you've got is inside here in the blueprints folder you got your original cursor, your top-down character, top-down controller. You look at your top-down character, and God damn it, Unreal Engine 4, you suck, dick. Editor preferences, main window. Damn it! So when you open up thing, look, it goes to the correct location. Switch cameras if HMD is enabled. HMD is head mounted display. Well, I'm not going to use a head mounted display, so get rid of you. Reset HMD orientation and orientate Eno. Okay, whatever. Um, they spell, they got a typo there. I don't need that. Get out. If HMD is enabled, look in VR to move in game cursor. Well, that sounds like fun, but I'm not using that. So now I can grab this. I'm not using a head mounted display. I'm not using VR. So I don't need all that fancy crapola. So now I can just grab all this stuff, line it up, and I'm good. So if you're not using it, is head mount display enabled? I don't want you there at all. So got rid of that. There, got rid of a bunch of extra stuff that I don't need because I'm not using that. But did I kill it by doing it? So what you do is you delete what you think you don't need, hit play, and uh-oh, we did kill something. So, in our top-down character, what we don't have 
is in our begin play. So I'll go back and hit Control Z. Event begin play, and that's what we we killed. So since we don't have the event begin play, is where it told us that um, we need to be using a specific camera. So I just needed to undelete some stuff. I don't need you at all, but since on event begin play, we don't need this. So true, okay. We don't need you. We don't need VR camera. We don't need the branch, and we don't need that. We just need that. So weeding that out actually gives me only what I absolutely need. I don't even need you. Get out of there. So that cleans up my character. And yeah, that's it. So now when I hit play, I get my camera back. And everything works perfectly without the extra VR stuff that we don't need. And then on the top-down controller... Well, that's the move to hit location, and this wasn't in my example because I deleted it, because I didn't need it, because I put it into the event graph. So again, we have, if head mounted display is enabled, well, I don't want it enabled, because I'm not using that. So I'm going to de delete you. Is head mounted display enabled? No. If false, then we got this. So we need to keep these two and just connect this to here and I'm not using touch controller so I don't need any of this and then at this point I don't even need that sequence node so I can connect that back in and I can now move this over to here this over to here and condense a lot of this stuff because it's I'm not using the majority of the stuff they had set up in here so I just got rid of a bunch of stuff and that's all that I need out of the uh, player controller and I moved to hit location would still need that so I hope you guys found this a slight bit informative to experiment try other templates you might find things you didn't know you could do. Um, you might also learn a few things here and there. Even if this is not a project type that you would normally be doing, I learned things by going to this and actually spending time doing it because I, I, there were things that are actually relatively simple that I didn't know I could do. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'm going to go into a different project here and experiment with some other stuff, and I'll, I'll probably stream a little bit more a little bit later to see if I can apply some of this stuff into um, another project. So, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you soon.